Let's take a run through problem 12-3A, a make or buy decision. Carol's Cupcakes sells cupcakes and other desserts through its retail store. The company has always made all of the ingredients from scratch, but has recently been approached by a supplier that specializes in icing. Carol believes that the supplier's icing is of equal quality to her own and believes their offer of $3 per liter may save her company money. Uh, Carol is evaluating the her own cost of producing icing. And so you can see the dilemma appearing here. And this is the make or buy dilemma. An outside supplier offers you a price and you are making a similar product and it's seemingly costing you more. And so the dilemma is, should we make it ourselves or should we bring it in from an outside supplier? Um, okay, uh, it goes on to say, examining the report, Carol says their icing is just as good and it would save me a dollar fifty per liter. Yeah, that's true. Four fifty versus three. Uh, that's over seventy five hundred dollars for the year. I think I'm going to take the deal. Okay, well, let's see if that's a fair statement or not using relevant costs here. Assuming there's no other use for the icing equipment or or the extra space it uses in the kitchen, what is the net dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting the supplier's offer? Okay, let's, I always like to just prepare a little table, make versus buy, make versus buy and let's just go through our costs and determine which costs are relevant and which are not so materials cost i think is relevant right if she buys she's not going to buy the sugar and whatever else goes in icing i have no idea <laughs> she's not going to buy the supplies to make her own icing so yeah this dollar of materials just goes away so it's a dollar under make it's zero dollars under buy Direct labor. Well, there's no labor cost if you're buying, right? Like you're just bringing the stuff in. If you're making, yeah, it costs you 50 cents per unit per liter. Variable over it. Variable costs tend to be relevant. Fixed costs tend not to be relevant. That's a sort of rule of thumb. Uh, we'll see it's, it's you know, tend to be. There, there are exceptions as we will soon find out. But there are variable over it. That's a relevant cost. You know, you make more uh icing you pay more variable costs you make less icing you're going to make less variable costs so uh yeah and and if you buy you're you're not making anything so so the cost is different there right the cost would go to zero uh fixed overhead traceable had a little asterisk, and I'd like to read the asterisk before I make a determination here. It says 40% relates to cleaning and maintenance of the icing equipment. Okay, let's just talk about that 40%. So it's a dollar of fixed uh, overhead per unit per 5,000 liters. 40% um, of this is for cleaning and maintenance of icing equipment we're not going to be cleaning or maintaining our icing equipment if we're not making icing, right? There's, not, there's no need to clean it. Uh, so that 40 cents can go away. That, that absolutely, that is a relevant cost. If we buy the stuff, we're not going to be maintaining it. If we continue to make that 40 cents continues to uh, uh, be a relevant cost. Uh, and 60% relates to depreciation of icing equipment with no resale value. But depreciation almost always not relevant in this case it is not relevant it's a sunk cost you already bought the equipment right this depreciation cost is it's sunk you already paid for the equipment so this is uh, not a relevant cost to this decision this 60 cents this 60 percent should be ignored so fixed over a traceable the relevant portion is 40 percent and or 40 cents it is 40 percent and for buy you're not going to be doing any cleaning or maintenance fixed overhead allocated allocated fixed costs never relevant an allocated fixed cost is where you, you arbitrarily say uh for example our property taxes are uh you know whatever it is fifty thousand dollars you take up ten percent of the space so therefore you gotta pay five thousand dollars we're just going to allocate five thousand dollars in fixed costs to your department you know and we have all kinds of different fixed costs that we might allocate and say that's your department's share of this cost but importantly if the department goes away, the cost remains. That's what makes it an allocated cost. So if this department goes away, all the allocated costs would just get allocated to other departments. This is not relevant. Like this cost will continue in the company. So it's not different between the alternatives. If we make, it's $1.75 a unit. If we buy, it's $1.75 a unit. So we, we make it zero. We don't consider uh, irrelevant costs here. 
So let's add this up. Oh, hold on. I missed one thing. There's a highly relevant cost, and that's the cost of buying, which is $3 a liter. Obviously, if that number was different, it would change our mind. If it was $10 a liter, we'd say no way. If it was $0.10 cents a liter, we'd say yes, please. Uh, that number is highly relevant, right? The purchase price. And if we make zero, we're not going to buy from an outside supplier. And if we buy, the purchase price was $3 a liter. So let's add this up. The total relevant cost of making a dollar plus 50 is a dollar 50, a dollar 75, a dollar 75 plus, plus 0.4 is two dollars and 15 cents and zero 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 three. Uh, yeah, so you can see uh, make is 85 cents per liter better. then buy. Let's read the question. It says, assuming there's no other use for the icing equipment or for the space in the kitchen, uh, what's the net dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting the supplier's offer? So if we accept the offer, we, sorry, my writing will be, uh, 85 cents per liter worse off. And what is that overall? How many liters are we moving here? Uh, 5,000 liters. So times 5,000 liters, 0.85 times 5,000, 4,250 worse off overall. 4,250 worse off overall. So uh, do we do it? No, <laughs> right? We're $4,250 worse off if we do it. Now, importantly, if we can find some use for that space that the, um, the, the icing used to be made in, right? Maybe we start making some other, uh, dessert or something, right? Uh, if that's the case and we start making money with that space, well, it changes the math here and that's what's going to happen here. Uh, B says, if the offer is accepted, Carol's Cupcakes could use the space that had previously been used for making icing as a bacon frying space. Carol believes a new bacon line of cupcakes, that sounds good to me, would produce margins of $5,000 a year. Should Carol's Cupcakes accept the supplier's offer or not? Well, now that changes the, the math. We said that buying was $42.50 worse off. If we have an option, if there's an option to improve the buy alternative, right? Which this is, right? This makes uh, buy better, right? If, if we end up buying, we can use the space we use for icing to generate $5,000 a year. So buy five thousand dollars all of a sudden it was 42.50 worse off well we've just improved it by five thousand dollars where's it going to be now buy will be 750 better than make and the math there, I hope, is straightforward. We said buy was 4250 negative, right? Negative to our company, but we just came up with an option that improves the buy option by 5,000. Negative 4250 plus 5,000 means we're 750 to the good side. So, what's the, uh, should Carol's Cupcakes accept the offer? Yeah, if, if we think we can use the space and generate five grand, Yes, right? That's the answer. The company's gonna be 750 better off. And there you go. And there's lots of things she should consider, like, does she really trust the supplier? She says the icing is good, but you know, if the chips are down and the supplier fails to deliver, that's going to cause problems. If she's getting rid of all this old equipment, she's using the space to fry bacon. And how confident is she in the bacon cupcake? Maybe it's going to be way bigger than she planned. And that would be a good thing. So there's upside here as well. It's not all downside, but the risks are you got to trust that supplier and you got to trust your judgment on the bacon cupcake. All right. That's it for 12.3a. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. The next video in our series is right up here, and if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.